in a lot of our projects is often useful to keep track of time. This is especially important when we're working with sensors and trying to collect data at regular intervals. So in this video, we're going to learn how to connect a clock to a microcontroller using a DS3231 real-time clock connected over I2C to an Arduino Uno and to an ESP32 development boards. All right, let's do this. For this video, I'll use a DS3231 breakout board, a CR2032 coin cell battery, an Arduino Uno clone, as well as an ESP32 development board, and some male-to-male -male Dupont wires to connect everything together. As usual, you can find these components in my little Amazon shop, I'll leave a link in the description of the video. The connections are very straightforward. Using the Dupont wires, I'll start by connecting the ground and the power lines. I'll choose the 5V pin on the Arduino Uno, but the DS3231 can also operate at 3.3V. I'll also connect the Arduino Uno board to the USB port of my computer. Next, I'll open up the Arduino IDE. Use the Tools menu to select the Manage Libraries option, and using the Library Manager, I'll search for RTC Lib. I'll go ahead and install it, and using the File menu, I'll search for the Timestamp example. I'll make a few changes to the sketch. First, I'll change the class to match the RTC that I'm using. Then, I'll make sure we're using the correct methods for that class. That way, in the setup function, we can set the initial time of the real-time clock by using the operating system time at which the sketch was uploaded to the microcontroller. I'll set the serial communication speed to our usual 115-200, and I'm ready to upload the code. I'll select the correct board and port from the Tools menu option, and hit the Upload button. If we now open the serial monitor and set the correct speed for communication, we'll be able to see the time data coming from the DS3231. Notice, however, that if we disconnect power to the RTC and reset the Arduino Uno, the time data from the DS3231 will go back to what it was when we uploaded the code. In order to avoid this, we'll use the coin cell battery so that when the DS3231 loses power, it's able to keep track of the time data. So now when we re-upload the code, the current operating system time will set the initial value of the time data. The difference is that now when the DS3231 loses power, it will keep track of the time that's elapsed. Once it's reconnected to the microcontroller, we'll be able to see that there is no interruption in the time data. We can now try the setup with the ESP32 development board. In this case, we'll use 3.3 volts for power as well as the I2C signals. By default, those are on pins D21 for data and D22 for the clock. With everything connected, we can go back to the Tools menu and select the correct board and port for this setup. We can then upload the code and see that even a day later, which is when I recorded this part of the video, the DS3231 still keeps track of the current time. Another way we can get time data using the ESP32 is by connecting to Wi-Fi and using an online service. For that, I'll go through the Tools menu and open the Manage Libraries to install the NTP Client library. We can then use the File menu to go to the examples for this library. I'll go ahead and open the one name Advance. 
I'll need to make a few changes to the sketch, starting with the correct Wi-Fi library for the ESP32. I'll also fill in my SSID and password, use the NTP pool of servers in North America, and set the time OSFET to my current region, which is GMT minus 8 hours. I'll leave the default update interval, which is set, to update every minute. I'll go ahead and upload the code, and if everything goes well, when I open the serial monitor I should be able to see the current time data for my region. You can use these values as a backup source or even to recalibrate the DS3231 every so often. And so there you have it. We've seen how to keep track of time using a real-time clock as well as an online source both with an Arduino Uno and an ESP32. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two that really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.